Hello everyone, I'm Brock, the Curly Man behind Curly Man's Comics, and today I'm going to be telling you about my comic book horror stories. Before I dive into this video, I want to ask you guys to like and subscribe, and don't forget to leave a comment, because I might do something with the comments at the end of this video. Before I get too much into this video, I just want to mention to you guys that I'm a very easygoing person, so take all of these things with the benefit of a doubt, that's kind of how I see them. These people that I'm having bad interactions with might have just had a bad day, or there's a bunch of different reasons that these things could have happened, so in no way am I saying the people that these events occurred with or what happened in the events are terrible things. They're just some of my worst experiences in comics. Some of you might not know that I actually graduate this week from college with a comic book degree, so basically that doesn't mean I know a bunch about history, but I know quite a bit on how to draw comics, write comics, and that's what I'm planning on doing with the rest of my life, as well as making these videos for fun on the side. But in my first year of college, in my first comics course, I created this comic about the Big Bad Wolf and Little Red Riding Hood as adults. I thought it was a really interesting story, I thought the art was really good, and as soon as I turned it in, all psyched, my teacher said, it's not bad, but all of your women in your comic look like men. And it hurt. It really hurt quite a bit. But you kind of learn in comics and drawing and making stories that there's always going to be criticism, and that criticism isn't necessarily a bad thing. I later went back and looked at that comic, and he was right. All of my women did look like men. So that's something I've been improving on. I kind of typically draw men, but I'm slowly working on more, introducing more women into my comics. So it's a learning experience, and you just have to take it as that. Alright, so probably the worst out of all of my stories was all of my comics that are my favorite I have hung up on my wall in some crappy Walmart frames, which is probably my first mistake, but I came home one day and I saw that three of them, if not more, had fallen off the wall, and I'm kind of blaming my brother on this one because we have a second story in my house, and he likes to like thunder stomp down the steps, and I'm pretty sure he shook the house enough that my comics fell, but I went into the room picked up the crappy Walmart frame of the first comic, looked at, it, looked at it, checked it over, perfect shape. I'm like, okay. Grab the other one, look at it, check it over, perfect shape. Grab the most expensive one, Saga number one, the glass is cracked, the back of it's shattered, there's pieces everywhere, and I grabbed the comic and sliced right across the front cover is this big white gaudy cut. On the back of it, it was crunched up. So that's definitely my horror story. I learned from it. I took all my comics down off of the wall. That's kind of when I started my CGC kick where I started sending them off to protect them. I even sent off the Saga number one to have it pressed. We'll see what it comes back at, but you can look forward to seeing that in some of my future videos. All right, so another horror story, not really of mine, but one that I witnessed was at C2E2. I was waiting in line to have a James Tynion comic signed. And the person behind me was with his girlfriend, he was super hyped. He had this rare Batman comic he was going to get signed, as well as some other ones. And he was so pumped he even brought the CGC witness with him. And, which was really nice, because I had the CGC uh, witness also witness uh, Tynion signing my comics as well. But he's all hyped, I'm talking to him, he's behind me, and as he's talking, he drops his prized comic book. And it lands on the floor, and he picks it up, and it looked like it was in a front-end collision. It was so crushed on the corner. I'm sure he could probably press it out to maybe an 8-something, but that was one of the funniest moments in a way that I witnessed. I felt terrible for him. He took it really well, so maybe it's happened to him a lot, but that was one of the comic horror stories that I witnessed. One thing that I've started to do as I've gained more comic book knowledge is I've started to go onto eBay and start selling off some of my collection. And none of these are comics that I care that much about. They're usually only $10 to $20 comics. And one of my first sales I ever made was a random issue from the Immortal Hulk series. And it was around, a t I'm pretty sure it was a $10 comic when I sent it off. And I make sure when I send my comics to package them really well. I had it between two cardboard pieces inside a Gemini mailer, all taped solid. It was a really nice package job. And I sent it off, and a couple days later, I got a message from the person that bought it, and it came in damaged. It was damaged, he later sent photos, uh, the corner was banged up. I don't know how it happened, USPS must have had a bad day, 
and I uh, decided to smash my box to little pieces. But I want to read you the message that I got from him because he was definitely not a happy shopper. Well, I received my book today, and needless to say, I am very disappointed in its condition. There is a huge defect along the spine at the very bottom of the front cover, below the barcode, in the white colored section of which completely devalues the worth of this book to almost nothing. I am withholding any and all feedback, positive or negative, until I hear back from you, giving you a chance to explain yourself. I have taken some pictures of the damage and will send these upon reply. Please respond ASAP so I can figure out how to correct your gross negligence and callousness. Thank you so much and have a great weekend. So needless to say, it's pretty obvious that he was pissed off and he later went on to kind of try and blackmail me in a way where I had to refund him all his money, which I was going to do no problem anyways, it was only a $10 comic, but he also wanted me to grade him as a positive buyer first before he would grade me as a positive seller. And it was one of my very first comics, I maybe had sold two before that. So you can imagine how bad my record is going to look on eBay if I have one terrible comic already sold and I've only sold three comics. So yeah, it scared me a bit. I'm still on eBay, I'm still selling it. It's my only bad experience I've ever had. But that was definitely one of the scariest comic horror stories that I had. One of my not quite as bad, but still kind of bad comic book horror stories happened at a flea market in Chicago. And I was new to comics, I didn't know a lot about comic condition and how much that affected the value of a comic. And I found this booth that had a bunch of old Spider-Man comics, so I thought I was going to get the deal of a lifetime and hassle this guy out of his money. He was maybe asking like $30 for a comic, and I'm like, I'll give you $20 for this comic, or I'll give you $10 for this comic. Uh, when all actuality, the comic was more like a dollar, two dollars. So I lost a lot of money that day, and I won't be able to sell those again, but they're still in my collection. I still love them, and it's one of my comic horror stories. Alright, so one more quick kind of horror story that wasn't me personally, but I saw happen to someone else. And it's just a reason to know more about your comics when you're trying to submit to CGC. But essentially what he did was he was going to a convention, I met him at this convention, and he bought a bunch of signed comics off of eBay that clearly weren't CGC witnessed. And he brought them all up to the CGC booth and he's like, I want to get these CGC signature series. And they're like, no, <laughs> they're not in a bag. They're not witnessed. And he thought for sure that it would be okay to have these CGC witnessed because they had a certificate of authenticity with them, but that's still not the case. You can send them off to CBCS if you want to do that, but not CGC. So we had all of these books. I don't know how much he paid for it, but he had a big stack and it was so crushing. It was funny to watch. Uh, he wasn't the nicest guy, if I'm being honest. He's a pretty rude person, but that's the kind of horror story. Just know what you're doing when you're going to CGC. Alright, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm a comics student, and as part of my comics degree, I had to have a field experience, which is typically for an intern kind of thing for people, but for me, I chose to volunteer at WonderCon in Anaheim. And it was the first comic convention that I ever had been to, so I didn't quite understand how things went, so I'm going to take some of the blame on this one. But I saw one of my favorite artists there, and he's a big time artist. And I went up to him and I'm like, hey, would you be able to look at my art? If you're busy right now, I understand, I can give you a business card. And basically he shut me down, uh, not in the nicest way, he kind of told me to get out of here sort of deal. So uh, I had to leave the con for a bit, kind of recollect my thoughts, but I kind of realized, you know, if he was a busy person, I was asking the wrong thing. Uh, so I gave him the benefit of the doubt. But then at a later convention in Minnesota, I went to a panel and I saw him in the panel as well as a bunch of other people. And one of my questions that I wanted to ask the panel was, when it comes to a new artist publishing their book, it's probably not going to be their best work. So is it best to do it on Kickstarter or should I try and submit to a publisher? And if I submit to a publisher and it's not my best work, are they going to give me a bad reputation when I try to submit to them again? Are they always going to think of my crappy first one I sent in and maybe not even look at the better one that I just sent in? So that's what I asked the panel. And he was one of the first people to answer and basically said, if you're not good enough, if you're not the best in the world, I don't want to see any of your artwork. And it hurt again. Uh, he's kind of a repeat offender on crushing my soul. 
But it was really funny because the worst comic moment of mine quickly turned into the best comic moment of mine. And everyone else in the panel just jumped on him right away. They're like, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. Don't ever shut down a new coming artist. Or you've been in the field too long. You don't understand what it's like for new artists. And it was hilarious. It was one of the best moments I ever experienced. One of the people I really wanted an answer from wasn't able to answer. His name is Andrew McLean. He did the Headlopper series as well as some other smaller independent series, but Headlopper really blew up on Kickstarter. And that's kind of how he first got his name out there. And I wanted his answer, but I wasn't able to get it. And later I saw him on the con floor and I asked him and he, he kind of flagged me down quick. And he's like, hey, I really like your question. I just want to mention to you that guy that first talked, the one that I've had bad experiences with, he told me, take everything he said, crumple it up into a tight ball, and throw it into the fucking garbage. And it was one of the best moments of my life. He kind of helped me out. Him and his wife are like a really good duo. They kind of work on all the comics together. She kind of helps with the dialogue and text and everything like that, as well as looking over everything to seeing if it looks right. She's kind of his own editor in a way which is kind of how my relationship is with my girlfriend right now also. So I could really relate with him. He's a really great guy to talk to. So that's kind of how one of my comic horror stories quickly turned into one of the best stories in my comic history. And those are my top comic book horror stories. Again, I want to ask you to like and subscribe. And I want to do something special with the comments this week. I want you to comment what your comic book horror stories are. And I'll make a video uh, talking about all of your horror stories if you're interested in that. As always, I'm Brock, the Curly Man behind Curly Man's Comics, signing off.